Welcome to Alders Gate. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. My name is Hannah and it's an honor to serve as one of the pastors here. If this is your first time connecting with us, we encourage you to go to our website, aldersgatechurch.net backslash I'm dash new, and there are ways to get connected. Also, I want to let you know that coming up on February 16th, we are having a missions night. We will worship together at 6.30 in the sanctuary and then travel down to the Family Life Center to pack kits together for Missions Central. And so we encourage you to bring donations with you that evening or to drop them off two Sundays ahead of time. And so if you visit our website, aldersgatechurch.net, you'll see some rolling slides on the homepage and there is more information specifically about what kind of new donations we are seeking to build those Mission Central kits. Also, we are going to begin an all church-wide study in March together as we prepare for Easter in a time of Lent together. So if you would like to be a part of a Lenten study or even perhaps lead a new small group at Aldersgate, please email Diane, who's our director of discipleship. Her email is Diane K at aldersgatechurch.net. So Diane K at aldersgatechurch.net. Please connect with her about ways that you can be involved in our small group ministry at Aldersgate starting in the month of March. We are so thankful for each and every single one of you. And today we're starting a new sermon series titled On Mission. Pastor Scott McKenzie is here to share with us today, but before we jump in, I just want to thank you for your partnership with Alder Skate Church. You allow vital ministries and amazing stories to happen every single day as a part of this faith community. And so right now, I want to take a moment and I want to share one of those amazing stories with you from my friend, Wendy. Take a look. Hello church, I'm Wendy Johnson. In December, I participated in the first of hopefully many Aldersgate Prayer Walk. I heard about the Prayer Walk during Sunday services. It wasn't until I saw the article in the Weekly Guide Shopper that I decided to hold the walk in my own 36 townhome community. In the week leading up to the walk, I decided to go a step further since this was my own neighborhood and just take it a step further by not only including rock, the rock and invitation, but bagging them along with some of my own homemade Christmas cookies. The day of the walk, my son Bryce and I were talking about how this simple gesture was a way of spreading the light in our community, kind of like we do on Christmas Eve in the sanctuary by spreading the light to one another on Christmas Eve but that we were doing this ahead of Christmas and ahead of Christmas Eve out in our own community. And we felt really good about that. We prayed over the bags since it was a cold day. And once we headed out, once we dropped the bags on the porch, we just said a simple blessing of the home and the family. What I didn't see coming were the blessings that I received as a result of this simple but appreciated gesture. I received many words of thanks and comments and also received cards from people I don't even know. I even saw the grumpy HOA president's heart soften a bit. We all need some hope, especially during these uncertain days of isolation during a pandemic that we didn't see coming and with no real end in sight. I encourage you to spread the light of Christ in your communities, in your workplaces, and here at Aldersgate when you see an opportunity. Good morning. My name is Scott McKenzie, and I'm a consultant and coach, a pastor, uh, helping and serving here with uh, the people of Aldersgate United Methodist Church. And I've been asked to uh, kick off a series on reaching out to neighbors. And the scripture that Hannah and Tom suggested I use was the Good Samaritan. And I thought, that'll be easy, no problem. Well, I have to confess, it was a little bit of a struggle. And then I found a book called Fierce Love by Dr. Uh, Jackie Lewis, and she talks about the Good Samaritan. And I want to share with you some of what she says. 
she paraphrases the story. So I'm not going to read the scripture to you, but I'm going to share with you the paraphrase that Reverend Lewis uses. Rabbi Jesus is talking to a religious leader, a lawyer, a scholar, about what it means to be faithful. Together they review the Jewish scriptures. The way to live right is to love God with everything you have and to then love your neighbor as yourself. Now, looking for a loophole, as lawyers sometimes do, the lawyer wanted to qualify. Wanted to qualify, who exactly is my neighbor? Jesus answers by telling a story, a story that many of you have heard many different times. The story about a man who was robbed and beaten, left for dead by a marauding gang, a priest, and another religious man. What do they do? Well, they walk by, they see the man on the ground, and they do nothing. But... A Samaritan comes along, a Samaritan, a mixed-race person, considered in ancient times to be an impure enemy of the Jewish people. This enemy of the Jews did not cross the street. Instead, he tended to the wounded man. You see, the moral of the story is the despised Samaritan is, in fact, the good neighbor. In in using this story, Jackie Lewis says the answer to the question of the definition of neighbor, Jesus is getting to the very essentials of what it is to be a follower and lover of God, to love God with all, all you have. To love God with all you have and to love your neighbor as yourself. And he tells this story to make the point. What you think is on the outside, God has put on the inside. The Samaritan is more on the inside, is more inside the boundaries of what is good and pure loving and godly than the religious leaders who simply pass by, who did nothing to stop the bleeding, help the beaten man on the streets. You see, in telling this story about a hated mixed-race Samaritan doing a good deed, Dr. Lewis says this, Jesus is blowing apart, disrupting the idea of borders and boundaries. If you want to know what love looks like, Jesus is saying, here it is. Love crosses all borders and boundaries. It makes new cultural rules. It cares for the stranger. Love turn strangers into friends. Hear that again. Love turns strangers into friends. Fierce love, fierce love is rule-breaking, border-crossing, ferocious, and extravagant kindness. What an amazing sentence. I experienced that kind of fierce love, or I heard about that kind of fierce love at one of my churches down in Edgemont, Maryland. And I'm going to tell you the name of the church. It's Joy Reigns. And if you ever get down there, it's an ELCA church. They're an amazing small group of people. One of, one of their parishioners had a son a son who became addicted to opioids. And he left home. He went down to inner city Baltimore, caught up in the lifestyle of drugs and all that goes along with it. 
Let me tell you what the Joy Reigns family did because they fiercely loved. They went down to downtown Baltimore, pastor, lay people, and they walked the streets, put signs and posters until finally, finally, in that fierce, ferocious love, they found the young man. And in the fierce, ferocious love, they crossed boundaries and borders. They made sure he got help. It took three or four recovery houses until it finally took. But it did. And it was because of that fierce, ferocious love. And now that young man is in his 30s, has a great job, bought a home, a wife, and a child. A fierce, ferocious love. We need to open our eyes. Open our eyes. Look across the room. Look across the pews. Look at one another. Look across the street. Look at the homes that are surrounding us. And then reach out to our neighbors, offering our hand, our compassion, and yes, the fullness of our hearts. But we make a mistake if we think it's all about out there. We make a mistake if we think it's all about out there. Because I think in today's climate, in all that we see going on in this world, in our church, everywhere, this fierce, ferocious love has to start right here. When Mother Teresa was receiving the Nobel Peace Prize, she was asked, kind of like one of those lawyerly questions, you know, how do you achieve world peace? And like Jesus, she gave a rather unexpected answer. She said, go home and love your family. Maybe we can change that and say, go home and fiercely, ferociously love your family. And then she said this, do we know our poor people? Do we know the poor in our house, in our families? We could say in our churches. Perhaps they are not hungry for a piece of bread. Perhaps our children, our husband, wife, fellow parishioners are not hungry or naked or dispossessed. But perhaps they are the ones who feel unwanted, deprived of affection, and alone. So why does it seem so much easier to see the need far away, to share the good news far away? Why can I share the, the good news of God's grace when I'm sitting with a stranger in an airplane? And sometimes not my own family. Today, today, Let's open our eyes to the needs of the people around us and closest to us. Because the truth of the matter is this. We can bring our neighbors in. But if they come in and they see anger 
if they come in and see a house divided, they will not stay. They will not stay. Let's open our eyes to the ones around us, our family, our friends, our pastors, the staff, the people in the pew beside you over there, over there. Let's share the good news of God's amazing love and grace. Let's fiercely and ferociously love. Can we let a child, can we let a spouse, a parent, a brother or sister, somebody here in our own pews, can we let them know how fiercely, fiercely they are loved by God and by us? Will you join me in a word of prayer? God, I ask that you would forgive me for having eyes closed and not always seeing the hurt, the pain of the people beside me. That you would forgive me for the times when those I love, those that are right here, are hurting and I choose to go on the other side of the street. Fill our hearts, O oh God, with a ferocious love for one another and for those around us. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. of your peace where there is war that fighting seas all oh, that divides us come reconcile us make me a vessel of your peace make me a vessel Break it up All creeds and colors Bind us together Make me a vessel of your love Pour me out Pour me out Pour me out Wherever I
心。